Point systems are crucial. This is how we crown a champion. The point system in NASCAR determines the best driver every year. Any change to this system changes how we determine the champion. NASCAR has had multiple point systems through its years. From its conception to 2003, NASCAR had a single, continuous, season-long point system. Although the system varied from year to year slightly, the concept was consistent. In 2004, NASCAR introduced the chase, and that idea has been tossed around and modified many times. This is what we now know as the playoffs. In modern NASCAR, every driver that qualifies for the race is rewarded with points. Essentially, if you start the race, you will receive points. But what if that wasn't the case? What if you weren't guaranteed points? What if NASCAR had the F1 point system? The modern Formula 1 point system awards the top 10 finishers in every race. They have a season-long point system with no playoffs. Pure racing. This is how we break down the points. First place receives 25 points, second with 18, third with 15 points, and then all the way down to 10th place who gets 1 point. Everyone else gets zero. You're awarded for good performances while mediocre and poor performances are forgotten. If you finish 11th, 16th, or even 20th, you are awarded with the same dismal result. Zero points. During seasons, some drivers may not score a single point, which make them that much more valuable in Formula 1. NASCAR throws points around to every driver in the field. You can compare the two point systems like this. In Formula 1, a driver who finishes 11th gets the same amount of points as a driver who finishes 20th. In NASCAR, a driver who finishes 11th will receive 9 more points than a driver that... Now let's say NASCAR used F1's point system. I'll just give a hypothetical scenario. Jimmy Johnson leads the first 498 laps at Martinsville, then gets shuffled back on a final restart and finishes 11th. He would be awarded with just as many points as Clint Boyer, who crashed before we got to the start on lap 1, and finished last. For Johnson, there would be no points for the finish, any stage points, or even a bonus point for leading a lap. You can begin to see that F1's point system suits its racing style and smaller field, while NASCAR's point system suits its respective style and larger field. With all the calamity that occurs at the end of a NASCAR race with multiple overtimes and wrecks, you can begin to see why NASCAR's point system is the way it is. This may have even played a part in adding stages in the middle of the races. But in the grand scheme of things, just how much would implementing F1's point system into NASCAR change things? Here are the 2019 NASCAR official standings. Now let's compare that with how the championship would have looked if NASCAR used F1's points. Right off the bat, you see that we have crowned a new champion, and almost every position has changed. Eric Jones moved up 9 positions. What's wild is if you look at the rest of the list. Justin Haley, a surprise winner at Daytona, and 3 starts would have finished 20th in points. This would have been ahead of both Dillon brothers, both JTG Daughtery racing cars, Ricky Stenhouse Jr., Bubba Wallace, and Paul Menard. All of these drivers made 36 starts. So here's the complete list of the 2019 NASCAR standings. It's really fascinating to look at. We would have a new champion, Paul Menard and Chris Buescher would have fallen 10 spots each. Not to mention, we would have had an amazing battle for the championship at Homestead. With all this said, would it be a good move for NASCAR? I don't know, so let me know in the comments down below. If this interests enough people, I'd love to do a mock season such as the 2011 a Cup season and use the F1 point system going race by race. I hope you guys enjoyed watching, and if you did, leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.